Okay, in this video we're going to take a look at how to find the integrals that involve the natural log functions. And specifically we're going to look at this case right here. What is the integral of 1 over x? And it will turn out to be uh, equal to the natural log of x plus c. Now, before we get into where that rule comes from, um, when you see a problem that's similar to this, in the past you've always used the power rule. But let's take a quick look at this and see why the power rule won't work in this case. Okay, now just a reminder, what the power rule is, it says if you have x to the n, when you find the antiderivative, you raise the exponent by 1 and divide by the new exponent. Now, it's always had over here this little n cannot be equal to a negative 1, but up until now, most people haven't paid attention to that. So let's look at a couple of examples and see why you have to consider that thing. Okay, let's, we'll look here at two examples. Now, in this first example, the power rule will work, and you'll see why in the second example, the powerful power rule will not work. Okay, so first of all, if you were going to find this antiderivative, uh, you would take the x cubed and bring it from the denominator up to the numerator, and it would look something like this. So we'll make it be x to the negative 3 in the top dx. So this is just the rewrite part. And what the rule says is add 1. So you're going to add 1 here. And that's going to get you to x to the negative 2 divided by a negative 2 plus c. So the power rule works in this case. Now if you want to clean it up a little bit, you can make it be a negative 1 and take this x to the negative 2 and move it back down to the bottom, and then add a plus c, and power rule worked just fine here. But now look at this next example. Suppose you decide to apply the power rule here. Now again, when you've got a 1 over x, think of it as being x to the first power. So when you find the end, first of all, we'll do just like we did up here. Take the x from the bottom and move it to the top. So this will become the integral of x to the negative 1 dx. Now when you apply, try to apply the power rule, what happens is this. You're going to add 1 to the top and divide by the new exponent. So I'll add 1 here, and I wind up with this. x to the 0 divided by 0 plus c. Well, you can't have division by 0, so what this means is that this thing simply doesn't work. So whenever you've got an integral that's in this form right here, um, the integral of 1 over x dx, that means that you cannot use the power rule. So you can kind of come up here and just put a big x through the whole thing. So the power rule does not work for the integral of 1 over x, and that's what this is for right here. Uh, as long as n is not equal to a negative 1, then the power rule works. But whenever you've got a 1 over x, that's like having x to the negative 1. Whenever you've got x to the negative 1, power rule doesn't work, and you have to switch to this new rule. So now with that in mind, let's go back and take a look at, at the formulas that we were looking at previously. Okay, and it'll turn out to be this. The, <clears throat> the antiderivative of 1 over x will be equal to the natural log of x plus c. And you'll see this, the natural log of the absolute value of x. And all that absolute value is for is just to remind you that you cannot take the log of negative numbers or zero. Logs are only defined for positive numbers. And a formula actually takes two forms. Uh, if it's a simple x, it's just the antiderivative of 1 over x is equal to the natural log of x. But if the denominator is something more complicated than just a simple x, then you'll have to use u substitution. And it looks similar, and we'll run through a couple of examples here. Now again, it will help, I think, before we do the integrals, if we back up just a bit and take a quick look at the derivative of these two functions. So let's do that real quickly. <clears throat> Okay, now this is from a previous video, and just a reminder <clears throat> that the derivative of the natural log of x is defined to be 1 over x. Um, and the derivative, if it's something more complicated than a simple x, then the derivative, the, the uh, definition changes just a little bit. It's 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument. Now to remind you how both those work, let's take a quick look at an example of each one of these. So what happens is this. If it's just a simple x, if y is equal to the natural log of x, then the derivative would be this. y prime would be equal to uh, 1 over x, and you'd be done. <clears throat> That's where this comes from. But remember, if 
the argument is something more complicated than just a simple x, <clears throat> then you have to use this modified rule. So it's 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument. So what that's going to look like will be this. y prime would be equal to, it will be 1 over the argument. then the whole thing times the derivative of the argument. So this would be 3x squared minus 4x. Now if you want to, you can take this one and put it on top. But uh, just remember, if it's a simple x, it's just 1 over x. If it's something more complicated than just a simple x, then it's 1 over the argument times the derivative of the argument. So with that in mind, let's go back now and look at the interval, interval rules one more time. Okay, now, um, again, if it's, so if the derivative of the natural log of x gets you to 1 over x, then the antiderivative of 1 over x will get you back to the natural log of x. And then you'll always attach a plus c, just like we've done before. Now, if the denominator is something more complicated than just a simple x, you're going to have to use u substitution. So you might put a note down here, and I'll just put it in here. This is going to involve u substitution. So u substitution here. So if it's a simple x, you don't need u substitution. But in most problems, uh, it's going to require u substitution because that denominator is going to be something a little bit more complicated than a simple x. OK, so with the rules out of the way, let's go ahead and take a look at an example. OK, now, if you're lucky, this one right here will not require u substitution. The second one will require u substitution. Now, in the first one, the idea is you want to manipulate it. You're looking to get it in the form of an integral of 1 over something. So first of all, here's a constant 3. So the first step I'm going to do here is go ahead and pull that 3 to the outside of the integral. So 3 times the integral of 1 over x dx. Okay, now I've got it in this form. So again, just to go back and remind you of the rules, um, once you've got the antiderivative of 1 over x dx, that turns into the natural log of the absolute value of x. So up here, this will be, here's the constant 3. Then the antiderivative of this will turn into the natural log of the absolute value of x. And then you can have a plus c. Now again, the absolute value is just because you can't take the uh, natural log of uh, negative numbers or zeros. Now, if you wanted to, you could rewrite this in the final form. It's 3 times the natural log of absolute value of x plus c. So what that is, that's an example that did not require u substitution. Now, on this one, though, is this. You've got the antiderivative of 1 over 3x plus 2. Now, the denominator in this case is something more complicated than just a simple u. So you're going to have to use, or a simple x. So you're going to have to use u substitution on this. So first of all, let's go ahead and do our u substitution over here. So I'll let u be equal to 3x plus 2. Then find the derivative. So the derivative of u with respect to x would be equal to 3, which gets me to du would be equal to 3dx. Now again, what I'm trying to replace here is just this. I've got a dx right here. So I'm going to replace that with the dx right here. So I've got to get rid of this 3. So I'll take the 3 from this side to both, both sides, and I get 1 third du is equal to dx. Now there's the dx. It matches up with this dx, so I can replace it with this right here. So again, here is my u substitution right here. I think I'll go ahead and put a little box around that. We'll go from here to here. Here, here, and back over here again. So that was the u substitution. Now when I put it back in the formula, it will look like this. That gets me to the integral of 1 over u, and dx is equal to 1 third du. So I'll put a 1 third du right here. Okay, next thing, go ahead and bring the one-third out in front. So that's going to get you to one-third times the integral of one over u 
du. And again, once you get it to an integral of 1 over u, then just a reminder, let's go back to the formula again, uh, the antiderivative of 1 over u, it'll be the natural log of u plus c. So this will change into 1 third of, and I think I'll put parentheses around this, this will be the natural log of absolute value of u plus c. And then the last step is to go ahead and replace u with what it was equal to to begin with. So that will get you to one-third times the natural log of the absolute value of. And in place of u, put what u is equal to. So you've got 3x plus 2 plus c, and there is the answer. So the first problem, as long as it's a simple x right here, then you don't need u substitution. But if it's something, if the denominator is something more complicated than just a simple x, you will have to use u substitution and it takes a little bit more work. Yeah, let's try one more example that requires u substitution, but a little bit more effort on this one. Okay, now again, what I'm going to do, I'll have to think of this as being like this. Um, I'll rewrite this as the antiderivative of, and I always like to have one over something, so I'm going to put one over. And uh, we'll go over to, say, here. And then I'll leave the denominator alone. So this is going to be x cubed minus 3x plus 1. And then I'll take this whole numerator and scoot it off to the side. So x squared minus 1 dx. Now, you don't have to do this, but I always find it, it makes it easier to recognize that you have a 1 over u type of a problem. Now, in this case, I'm going to pick u to be the denominator, and I'll use that to get rid of this part right here. So what I'm going to try to do is to find is to eliminate this part right in here using u substitution. And I need to change it eventually into a 1 over u problem. So first of all, let's go ahead and do the u substitution. So in this case, what will happen is u would be equal to x cubed uh, minus 3x plus 1. And go ahead and find the derivative of that. So the derivative of u with respect to x would be equal to 3x squared minus 3. Now I'll take the dx. That means that uh, the differential of u would be 3x squared minus 3 dx. And we'll put parentheses around this. Okay, now at this point you have to look back up here. You're trying to get rid of an x squared minus 1 dx, but you've got a 3x squared minus 3. So somehow you've got to turn this into an x squared minus 1, and the way to do that is to factor a 3 out of both these terms. So that's going to give me a du, and I'll factor a 3 out of this, which gets me to this, x squared minus 1 dx. Now, there's the x squared minus 1, but I don't need this 3, so I'll move it to the other side, and I get 1 third du would be equal to x squared minus 1 dx. Now up here, I needed an x squared minus 1 dx, and I've got an x squared minus 1 dx. So in place of that, I'll substitute 1 third du. So there's my u substitution. Now again, let's just go ahead and like we've always done, is we'll put a little box around this one. So here, here, and back over here. So this will be enough just to divide it up, and this is going to be the u substitution right there. So now that we've got that out of the way, let's go ahead and uh, finish the problem up here. So this is going to turn into the antiderivative of 1 over u, and in place of this I'll put what it's equal to, which is 1 third du. So this will be 1 third du right here. Again, this one's easy to solve. Go ahead and just bring one third out in front. So that's going to give you one third, uh, the integral of one over u du. <clears throat> and again, let's go back and look at the rules on this one. If I go back to this, again, once you get it to an integral of one over u, it will turn into natural log of u plus c. So this will turn into one third of the natural log of 
the absolute value of u plus c. And again, as always, in use substitution, the last step is to replace u with what it's equal to back up here again. So the final answer would be one third of the natural log of the absolute value. And again, replace u with what it's equal to right here. So x cubed minus 3x plus 1. Then don't forget to tack on the plus c, and you've got it. So once again, some of the problems require use substitution, and the argument goes like this. If the denominator is something more complicated than just a simple x, then to turn it into a 1 over u, you're going to have to use uh, u substitution. Um, so let's take one last look at the rules. And again, if it's just a simple x, then you don't need u substitution, and it turns into this. If it's 1 over something more complicated than a <clears throat> simple x, then you do need u substitution, but the process will still be the same. So that's the first set of examples on how to find the integrals <clears throat> that involve the natural log function.